tonight, Speedway action returns to the Smallbrook Stadium at Ride on the Isle of Wight after a break of two years. In that time, promoters Barry Bishop and Martin Widman and a host of other helpers have moved mountains to bring Speedway back to the island. Tonight's meeting, the Vince Mapley Memorial Individual, is sponsored by Beta Pack, and it brings together 12 riders, eight of whom are Isle of Wight riders who will ride for the 2016 team named White Link Warriors, together with four other guest riders who race in the National League for other clubs. The format of this event will feature 12 heats, with each rider having four races on different starting gate positions, with the top eight point scorers going into two semi-final races. The race winners and second placed riders in the semis will go on to race in the final. Each race has an individual race sponsor, with their representatives present here this evening. So we wish you and the main meeting sponsors, Beta Pack, an enjoyable evening and we hope to see you back here to support the Warriors in the season ahead. We're now only minutes away from the start of what we hope will be a very successful season for the club both on and off the track in 2016. Tomorrow the team will visit Somerset, who race in the Premier League for an inter-league challenge match. Then next week we are back here for a four-team tournament pitting our Warriors against three extinct clubs, Weymouth, Exeter and Southampton. Warriors' first competitive team meeting begins at the Mildenhall Fen Tigers in the National Trophy fixture on the 17th of April. But now it's time to go racing, so down to the centre green to pick up the parade. Well, right in front of the fans in the stadium, Club mascot, young three-year-old Harley, gets his mini stabilised bike underway with good support from his family members from Oxford who have made the trip here today. Well, without further ado, let's introduce you now to the riders competing this evening. OK, rider number one in the programme is Lee Smart. And we move across here to rider number three, that's Tyler Govia. And just coming to the shot there, riding at number two in the programme is James Purchase. Number four is uh, Chris Widman, and of course his uh, father is uh, one of our promoters here, and that's Martin Widman, of course. Rider number five, and one of the favourites, I, I would suspect, for today's meeting, Ollie Greenwood. And moving up to their number six on his race jacket, that's Kelsey Dugard, and comes from a great Dugard family, Bob and Martin, of course, uh, a very uh, formidable rider in his day a few years ago. Mark Baisby rides at number seven. And coming into your picture now, it's actually rider number ten, Matt Saul. Each rider receiving a pendant um, for today's meeting. George Piper, rider number eight, just coming into uh, onto, or onto the track now and he's about to receive his pendant. He rides at number eight. Just uh, posing there for a few pictures. And of course, there's our young mascot again. There he is, Harley. Gets everywhere, doesn't he, Harley? George receiving his little medal. And uh, one of our popular riders who's likely to do very well, certainly another match favourite here. It's uh, Benji Compton riding at number 12. <laughs> And just appearing on our screens now is the meeting reserve at number 13, that's Adam Shepherd. And, uh, coming out now down the stands, um, James Cockle, very popular rider here, and uh, he's our Mr. Showman. There he is posing for cameras, loves his speedway. And he's a, he's a fun man. Great to see him. He's riding at number nine. OK, all the riders are now on their machines. We're now just literally just minutes away now from the opening heat. As the riders get pushed away, a couple of laps of the track. And now we're going to hand you over to our second bend race commentator, Tim Allen. The first race in with the White Link Warriors staging an individual meeting down here 
at the Small Britain Stadium at Ryde in the Isle of Wight. The Vince Mapley Memorial Meeting. Riders are coming out for heat number one. The meeting is currently sponsored by Beta Pack Limited. And the uh, promoters down there, Barry Bishop and Martin Woodman, they've done a tremendous amount of work to bring the sport back, which hasn't been uh, here, seen here for the last three or four years. So lining up in heat number one from gate one, on in red is Lee Smart. Gate two in blue, James Purchase. Gate three in white, Tyler Govia. And to complete the lineup, gate four in the yellow on the outside is Chris Whitman. The track record's down here at Smallbrook. Premier League, that's held by Jason Bunyan at 66.3 seconds. That was from the 15th of April in 2008. And the National League record is held by Adam Roy, 66.4 seconds, 24th of July in 2012. So, heat number one, the tapes are about to go up. Stunt Marshall walks away, and this is it. History in the making with the Warriors back on track in this individual meeting. All the way then, round bends one and two into the top turns there, around the bank in Lee Smart in red, leading the way, followed in yellow by Chris Whitman. as well spaced out in the first heat. Lee Smart looks to have this one well and truly sewn up and in the bag. Chris Whitman still in second place. Tyler Gobi in third and bringing up the rear in blue is James Purchase. One lap to go. Purchase uh, coasting for the uh, remainder of the last lap with the winner Lee Smart in red, second place Chris Whitman yellow, and third place Tyler Govia in third. So Lee Smart got things underway there in a winning time of 73.2 seconds, three points for him. James Purchase failed to score, Tyler Govia scores one point, Chris Whitman gets two. We've got 12 heats of Speedway today with two semi-finals to follow and the final. 12 riders there contesting this Vince Mapley Memorial meeting with uh, one reserve rider as well. Our referee for the day is Graham Reeve. It's also good to see down here as well as Smallbrook. Uh, the clerk of the course is Kevin Shepherd, who's uh, formerly the uh, team man joint team manager, along with Chris Hunt, who Chris is now at uh, Kent Kings. So it's great to see Kevin back and involved with the uh, Isle of Wight Speedway down here. Also, team manager for the Warriors this year is Neil Vacher, and we look forward to uh, grabbing a few words with Neil if we can at some point over the coming weeks. Right, let's get themselves ready then for heat number two. And in this heat, going from the inside in red in gate number one, Ollie Greenwood. In two from blue is Kelsey Dugard. Three in white is Mark Baseby, And four in yellow is George Piper. Tape's about to rise for heat number two. Stoller Marshall walks away and they're off in this one. Straight away flying from the tapes is the rider in red there, Ollie Greenwood. Coming around the middle of the track, into second place is the rider in white, Mark Baseby, who tries to go up very high and wide, getting the speed down the home straight. And it looks like this is going to be quite a close race between Greenwood and Baseby. And Baseby has been a firm favourite here for his all-action, never say die the races that he's had at Smallbrook. Putting Greenwood under a lot of pressure here, going into the last lap. Taking a look around the outside of turns one and two, along the back straight for the last time. Can he make the banking work for him coming out of turn number four as he got the legs? 
And no. Ollie Greenwood there winning heat number two in a winning time of 72.7 seconds. Scores himself three points. Kelsey Duggard in blue gets one point. Mark Baseby white he scored two. George Piper, he failed to score. And it's a Speedway Museum in America. It's based in Florida. And it's one of the see it going up. Coming up then to heat number three, we will see James Cockle go off red from gate number one, Matt Soul in blue from gate two, James Shane's in white from three, and Benji Compton in yellow from gate number four. Heat number three, and the tape squad for this one. Jumping away from the start there, James Shane's in white, followed closely by Cockle in red. Trying to go around the outside in yellow was Benji Compton, but Cockle keeps his ground to stay in second place. Shane's out front, and Shane's is the current grass track British Masters champion from 2015. Well used to big bumpy circuits. Riding for the Ken Kings this year, once again he's uh, putting his mark on this heat. Out front, I don't think anyone's going to get past him in this race. So coming down to start the last lap, and Shane's way out in front, followed by Cockle in red and Compton in yellow. And way at the back there in blue, Matt Soul. Three points then for the rider in white there, James Shanes. Uh, James Cockle in red, he scores himself two, and Benji Compton in yellow gets one, with Matt Sowell at the back, failing to score. And James Shanes winning time there, and he number three was 72.5 seconds. Ahead of heat number four, our Tim Allen caught up with Chris Whitburn on the ferry over to the meeting. We're on the ferry, on the White Link ferry, going over to the uh, first meeting of the relaunch of Isle of Wight Speedway under the White Link Warriors banner. And with me, we've got Chris. Chris, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your previous uh, riding experience on the Isle of Wight? I was back over here in 2013, um, sort of mid to end of July onwards. Um, it, as, as an away rider, I always struggled to adapt to because of being such a big fast track. Um, but uh, I managed to get my head together with a few few of the White Link team at the time, and um, you know got got dialed in, um, and I uh, produced some of the best races that I've had over here. So uh, yeah, looking forward to coming back, um, and hopefully uh, I've still got and, and the bikes have still got the legs in them. Okay, you're at Stoke now. Uh, so how do you find the difference in size between the tracks? Uh, size obviously it's a massive difference because uh, Isle of Wight's so much more bigger. Uh, shape, very very similar shape to to both tracks. You know, similar racing lines as well. Uh, but I mean, you what once you've ridden the Isle of Wight, everywhere seems like a milk round. You know, um, so uh, I mean, you've you've just got to tell yourself, you know, at the end of the day, it's a speedway track, and you ride it no no different to any other speedway track. So. Uh, but, I mean, sort of, um, you've you've got to be prepared to make radical changes around the Isle of Wight to be able to get the speed. Whereas other places, the changes are a lot more subtle. Um, so I mean, what once you adapt to the fact that you've got to make a massive change, um, you you'll be able to get around a lot faster. Is it uh, a big help to you as well having some family involvement over on the island? Um, one of the reasons why I didn't come here, yes. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, me, me dad was always down here with me um, when I rode for the Islanders. Um, and it's nice to see that him and Barry got it back up and running again. Um, but, uh, you know, my, my, my decision to stay at Stoke was 
purely the, the, the fact that I wanted to get my team place on merit, not because my dad's one of the promoters. Um, and a lot of people ask me, why, why haven't I gone there? And I said, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's the Isle of Wight is my dad's venture and my own career is my venture and I've got to go where, where it's best for me. Um, so it's, it's nice to be here for, for the opening night and you know, see, see, see all the work that my dad my brother um, has put in and obviously Barry as well. Um, and, and hopefully it works out well for them. And I guess you'll be on the end of the phone as well for any open bookings during the year. There's a dinner table there. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I said to, I mean, me, my dad came to me uh, back end of last year to say, do, do you want to run for the Isle of Wight? And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll see what other offers I get on the mainland, um, and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, but I, I always offered offered guest bookings, and you know, if he needs a rider, he knows that he's calling on someone who's well prepared and you know puts puts 110 percent into every meeting that he does. So. You know, the, the, the offer's always there and um, hopefully if you know the, the, the call does come to, to guests for the Isle of Wight then um, I'll, I'll be there for them as well. OK, looking good for this season then. And we wish you all the best. Obviously, when you're not riding against the Warriors, that is, of course. But tonight it's an individual meeting anyway, so wish you all the best in that, Chris. And thank you for your time on the White Link Ferry on the way over to our first meeting. Thank you. So we're now looking to he number four in this Vince Mapley Memorial meeting. Riders coming up to tapes end for this one. And this one is kindly sponsored in the memory of Roy Bomber Belcher. So riders end for heat number four in red from gate one on the inside, Chris Whitman, and we've already seen gate two in blue, Lee Smart, gate three in white, Ollie Greenwood, and gate four in yellow, completing your lineup for heat four is James Cockle. So Lee Smart, he's already got a win under his belt as has Ollie Greenwood, so we should have a fairly interesting tussle between these two with a bit of luck. Tapes go up and the man in white gets the jump. Greenwood heads it around the back straight there from Cockle in yellow. Smart is back there in the third place. Got a lot of catching up to do there. On way at the back is Chris Whitman. Ollie Greenwood looking very smooth. So looking like commentator's curse once again, saying it was going to be a good one there uh, between uh, Smart and Greenwood. Uh, totally caught that one wrong. Into the last lap, Greenwood with a commanding lead from Cockle, from Smart and Whitman. And another three points with his race win for Ollie Greenwood in white, followed by two points for the rider in yellow, James Cockle, one point for Lee Smart in blue, and Chris Woodman there just turning around prior to going over the uh, start line, returning to the pits. Winning time then for Ollie Greenwood there in heat number four was 72.4 seconds. Fastest one of the evening so far, looking very, very smooth there out on circuit. Heat number five, way open for everybody in this one as they come up to the tapes, get themselves ready. Sponsored by TB Motorcycles. Red in uh, is George Piper on the uh, gate one on the inside in blue in gate two, Matt Sol. Gate three in white is James Purchase and completely line up. Gate four on the outside, Kelsey Dugard. The riders here then had quite a bit of time away from the sport. James Purchase in white and George Piper in red. T 
takes rise. Heat number five out to the front. Around the outside is the rider in yellow, Kelsey Dugard from James Purchase in white. And Kelsey Dugard storming away with heat number five. Plenty of time to look back there over his shoulder. James Purchase in a very comfortable second place. And uh, quite a way back, Matt, Matt Soul in blue. And bringing the rear up in red is George Piper. Nice little turnout in the crowd as well for this opening meeting back here at Smallbrook. Going around the top end then on that banking for the last time in heat number five to take that checkered flag. And three points to his name, Kelsey Dugard in yellow. Second place in white, James Purchase. Coming around for third in blue is Matt Soul. And to bring up the rear, failing to score in red, George Piper. So the winning time then for Kelsey Dugard there in heat number five, 74.7 seconds. Kelsey, of course, comes from the famous Dugard dynasty at uh, Eastbourne with uh, obviously Martin and his, uh, and his father Bob as well, so uh, great Speedway dynasty and it's great to see them racing in the National League as well. And heat number six is sponsored by My First Speedway Skid. In red from the inside in uh, gate number one is James Shanes, who's been looking extremely fast so far out there. Gate two in blue, Benji Compton. Uh, gate three in white, Mark Baseby. And to complete the lineup of heat six in gate four on the outside in yellow is Tyler Govia. Benji Compton in blue, obviously, uh, just to keep one or two of you up to date, he's ridden for clubs such as Weymouth, Paul, Kent, Sheffield, Scunthorpe, to name a few in the past. Uh, he's come back down, been tempted down to the island. Uh, it's great to see that he's making that long trip down from his Yorkshire base. Star Marshall gets them ready. Green light goes on, off they go. Close tussle there on the first bend. Making a jump straight away was Mark Baseby, but forcing his way through James Change forces his way through to put Baseby slightly off balance and out towards the outside of the track. Baseby now looking at coming back with the uh, rider in blue pulling up. So Benji Compton's an early retirement in heat number six. So Baseby not letting Shane's get too far ahead of him. He's, uh, he's keeping them in with a shout as they come round to take the uh, penultimate lap flag. Can he do anything? Shane's had a quick look over his shoulder there. He looks fairly comfortable going around our top turn for the last time. And he bags another three points. For the win in red, James Shane's second and two points for Mark Baseby. And coasting over the line for his single point in yellow is Tyler Govia. The winning time then for heat number six was 71.6 seconds. There for the rider in red, James Shanes. So, so far we've got two riders there uh, unbeaten tonight. James Shanes, two wins, as has Ollie Greenwood. Also looking good in the mix, uh, James Cockle on two second places. Mark Baseby also on two second places. Kelsey Dugard, he's got himself uh, four points as well, as has Lee Smart. 
Right, now then, we're going to find out a little bit more about our meeting sponsors this evening, Peter Pack. My name is John Carter. I'm the general manager for Beta Pack in Rookley. Um, we look to save businesses time and money on all of their purchasing consumable needs. That can be from stationery to packaging to tea and coffee to cleaning products. Whatever that business needs to buy, we can save them time and money by supplying it in a single source supply. The late E Shepherd, sponsor of Heat Number no. Seven. James Cockle in red from gate number one on the inside. Gate two in blue is Kelsey Duggard. Gate three in white, Lee Smart. And gate four on the outside, James Shames. So with James Shames looking very good, Cockle and Lee Smart looking very, very uh, steady scorers. This could be a very interesting heat as well. Heat number seven, Starter Marshall starts to get them underway. Pulling them up to tapes. Just about ready then for the start of Heat 7. Last little uh, instructions there from the start marshal. His hands up, off he goes. Walking away, green light on. And the rider in white, he gets the initial jump followed by the rider in red. So Smart gets the jump over Cockle. Cockle takes a look up the inside then along the back straight, but Smart holds on. Heat number seven, Lee Smart from Cockle, but round the outside of Cockle. The rider in yellow, James Shane, storms past down the home straight. And he's now looking to put Lee Smart under pressure. James taking the high road around the top bend there, cuts back down straight in front of Cockle, and has the speed, and he's right up now behind Lee Smart. Getting closer and closer. He now tucks to the inside. Can he get smart? No, smart holds on for first place still. Around they go. Down the home straight for the last time in heat number seven. Last chance for Shane's to try and make it on smart. Can he make that cut back? So, so close. Smart holds on then. Rider in white, the winner, Lee Smart, three points. James Shane, super little ride from him in yellow, two points. And in three, po three points in red for James Cockle with Kelsey Doggard failing to score at the rear. 72.9 was the winning time there for heat number seven. Moving ahead, we got Ha Ha. They are the sponsors of heat number eight. Where we see from the inside, in red, gate number one, Benji Compton. Gate two in blue, Ollie Greenwood. Gate three in white, Chris Woodman. And gate four on the outside, in yellow, is James Purchase. Ollie Greenwood, as we've seen, he's uh, looking very, very smooth and, and uh, short out there on the Smallbrook circuit. James Purchase, he's uh, obviously coming back from a long layoff, several years out of the sport. Good to see him uh, return. And Chris Whitman, he's already had a few meetings for Stoke this year as well. Uh, so he uh, seems to be a little bit struggling at the moment, but uh, no doubt he'll get things together and knock a couple of points in before the end of the meeting. Late change then in heat number eight in the red helmet colour. Benji Compton's mechanical problems have uh, continued. And coming in as a reserve change is Adam Shepard. Tussle round turns one and two there with the riders in blue and white, Ollie Greenwood and Chris Whitman. And coming out on top is Ollie Greenwood who surges to the front. Although Chris Whitman there fighting back down the home straight. The riders in uh, yellow and red there tailing off. Uh, Adam Shepard obviously not had a ride so far this evening, so he's going to be a little bit off the pace, not tasted the circuit so far. 
Ollie Greenwood though, very, very smooth. It'll be interesting to see what he's like when he comes down in the, uh, in the National League visit later in the season. Greenwood then heading for the top turns for the last time. And another three points in the kit he goes for the rider in blue and your heat winner of heat number eight, Ollie Greenwood. Second place, rider in white, Chris Widman. And the rider in yellow, James Purchase, picks up that all important third place. Winning time of heat number eight then for Ollie Greenwood, 73.2 seconds. Adam Shapit there coming in as the late reserve replacement for Benji Compton. He fails to score. Ollie Greenwood obviously in blue, scores himself three good points there. Chris Woodman scores two from the white helmet colour and James Purchase in yellow, he scored one. So 12 main heats of the meeting and we're on to heat number nine sponsored by Dark Al Negro. So it's now getting down to the nitty gritty of things to see who will qualify for which semi-final and possibly progress to the final. So for heat number nine in red from the inside is Mark Baseby, gate two in blue Tyler Govia, gate three in white George Piper and to complete the lineup gate four in yellow on the outside is Matt Soule. So Mark Baseby currently on four points. Tyler Govia on two. George Piper's failed to score so far. And Matt Soule on one point. Surging to the front though. Straight away, the rider in red there, Mark Baseby. And Mark is absolutely flying in this one. He's gonna... Uh, he will obviously, he keeps on like this, take this by the proverbial mile. Second place, Tyler Govia. And battling for the minor place there is George Piper in white uh, with Matt Soul on his tail. As we saw there, Mark using that third and fourth bend to his advantage. And cleared off right into the distance, nearly a full straight ahead of everyone else. Coming around for three big points to put him back in the reckoning, he's now on to seven points. Race winner in red, Mark Baseby. Second place in blue and two points for him, Tyler Govia. And in yellow taking third place, Matt Soul from George Piper in fourth. Mark Baseby looking very, very quick indeed. Posting the fastest time of the evening in heat number nine, 71 seconds dead. So looking across the score sheet at the moment, uh, Lee Smart, he's, uh, he's moved on to seven points. James Purchase, he's on three. Tyler Govia, he's on four. Chris Whitman, he's also on four. Ollie Greenwood leads away, unbeaten so far. Three rides, three wins, nine points. Kelsey Dugard on four. Mark Baseby, he's moved on to seven. George Piper's failed to score so far. James Cockles on five. Matt Soule on two. James Shane's on eight. And Benji Compton on one with Adam Shepard taking one reserve ride so far. Well, we did have one notable absentee from the meeting, Brendan Johnson, and of course we know uh, why that is, he's injured, and we were able to catch up with him a little bit earlier, ahead of the meeting, and here's uh, Tim Allen again. So we've got Brendan Johnson, Brendan's out injured at the moment. Brendan, tell us what happened. Uh, I literally was just doing a few routine practice laps here, coming to Ben 1, back end cut, fell away and went under the air fence and bike followed me in. So it was quite a soft fall, um, as I seem to remember you putting on the social media. Yeah, it was just a soft one. The soft ones are always the worst, aren't they? And 
here I am on the sidelines instead of out racing. And when do you think you're going to be back? Uh, I went and got the arm laser today and uh, he's telling me I should be back about July. So hopefully I'll be back on a bike for July and straight back into the team. Straight back into the team or practicing? Yeah, <laughs> I should be saying practicing, but yeah, I'd like to be back in the team, but I don't, I, it all depends on how much strength I've got in it. And how frustrating is it to be here, a ride with the relaunch of the Isle of Wight Speedway and the Warriors watching rather than actually taking place? It's annoying because obviously this club means a lot to me. Obviously, previously in my career, I've ridden here and it, I kind of helped with the whole setup being coming back. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's a shame I can't be here to ride, but at least I'm here and supporting the guys and cheering them on and the crowd's starting to build up. So hopefully it'll be a good one. OK, so with your machinery, did that get damaged? No, nope, just me. Machinery's fine. I got damaged. OK, so not much to do in the workshop then? Nope. So you're all set for the comeback? And what are you going to do in between times? Wind you up. I thought that might be coming. Thank you very much, Brendan Johnson. <laughs> we move on then to heat number 10. And this is in uh, memory of Chazzy Bird, a very uh, well-known and very popular Speedway supporter for years and years. who sadly passed away last year. Gate one in red is James Purchase. Gate two in blue, we see George Piper. And gate three in white, Benji Compton. And gate four in yellow, Lee Smart. So looking at heat number 10, let's hope Benji Compton in white has got his engine problem sorted out. The start marshal walks back, low, green lights on, and off they go. Very tight there into Ben number one, but it is indeed Benji Compton to the front. Up the inside in yellow, so we see Lee Smart side by side going down the back straight but Benji Compton keeps the lead going high and wide around turn three and four and streaking off there into the distance well spread out already then after one lap of heat number 10 and this will no good uh, no doubt do uh, Benji Compton's confidence a world of good if he keeps this up and gets on winning heat number 10 Taking a slide off there in blue is George Piper in the uh, apex area of the first and second turn. Up quickly and takes his machine onto the centre green. Round for the last time in white, Benji Compton. As Lee Smart takes a tumble there coming into turn two. Ryder in red slows down, carries on. Smart is up. As we have the winner go across the line, Benji Compton and three points there to his name which moves him on to four, coming around to pick up second place in red. James Purchase there moves himself there on to uh, five points. And Lee Smart there remounting and crossing the line there for that one solitary point, which could be all important, as that now moves him on to eight points. Heat number 11, sponsored by Sharp UK, is very important for this one for Kelsey Dugard in red, going from gate number one and from gate two in blue, Chris Woodman. Both of those on four points, both need points to make the semi finals. James Shanes is the rider from gate three in white and completing the lineup of heat number 11 in gate four in yellow is Mark Baysby. So Mark Baysby and James Shanes already assured of their places in the semi finals. And with Mark Baysby's super fast time in his last time out, hardly pushed at all, obviously. We now see uh, the start of heat number 11. Jumping away from the start is the rider in white, James Shanes. Shane's going high and wide, cuts back straight across the path there. Off the rider in yellow, Baysby. Baysby putting everything in, so it's uh, a little bit out of control there on turn two. Regains his composure.
looking to the back of the field though in this one uh, Chris Whitman is going to be picking up that solitary all important point you never know that could see him through into the semis we'll have to wait and see for that see what happens over the next uh, race as we go into the last lap And Shane crosses that line in white and three more points to add to his total. And he finishes on 11 points. Second place in yellow, Mark Baseby. Uh, two points there for Mark. And he finishes on uh, nine points. Chris Whitman picks up that to all important third place for himself. And he finishes on five. And Kelsey Dugan in red fails to score, so he remains on four points. Winning time then for James Shanes in heat number 11 was 72.5 seconds. Heat number 12 then, sponsor for this one, MASL. And the riders coming out for this from gate one on the inside in red, Tyler Govia. Gate two in blue, James Cockle. Gate three in white is Matt Soul. And gate four on the outside in yellow is Ollie Greenwood. So Ollie Greenwood and James Cockle, they are as short of their places in the semi-final. Matt Soul, unfortunately, has only scored two points. So they'd have to have a fantastic heat win in this one to uh, stand a chance. Tyler Govier, meanwhile, uh, he's on four points. So he can do with a couple of points, really. But it's Ollie. Holly Greenwood going straight inside there of the rider in blue, James Cockle coming out of turn two. Some power in that machine he's got as he goes down the home straight. Cockle fighting back as hard as he can up the inside and he makes it around the inside of turns one and two. Cockle into the lead, overtaking Holly Greenwood. So it doesn't look like Greenwood's got an answer for Cockle in this one. Cockle looks like he's going to have this one in the bag as they come round for the last lap flag. Exit in turn for Dan at home straight for that checkered flag. And it's a win for James Cockle in blue. Second place, Ollie Greenwood in yellow. And picking up one point there in red, Sola Gaivia. Winning time there for James Cockle in heat number 12 was a 73.3 seconds. OK, ahead of the semi-final, uh, Chris Popple, our centre green presenter, managed to grab a few words with James Shanes. So we're here on track down by the Tates and we've got James Shanes with us uh, riding at number 11 tonight, riding for Kent uh, this season, James, and uh, having a good one so far tonight, just a one point drops, and uh, come out to have a quick look at the uh, start line, uh, how's it going for you tonight? Yeah, it's going really well today, I had a bit of an accident this morning on my finger, but other than that, it's been a great day, I don't really know what happened in, um, in the raid while I was off gate four, I dropped the point, and wasn't there, but um, it's been a great night, it's nice to be back over here at the island, it's been a long time and it's such a great track and I hope it stays there for much longer. So one of those things, uh, you can't win them all mate, as much as we'd like to uh, try, but uh, that finger then, maybe that was it, is it your throttle finger? Yeah. Is it yeah, a bit sore tonight? So looking forward to your season with Kent this season then? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a cracking first, I think we've had about three meetings so far this year and it's been amazing. The team has bonded so nicely together. It's got a great bond of um, like experience with Dave Mason and Luke. And the young ones like Jack and Dano who's picked up his game massively. Uh, you know, it's amazing to be part of a really good team. It's got a brilliant setup, and you know, I'm looking forward to coming over here again. So. Excellent, and uh, we're looking forward to having you over racing, getting to grips with the track tonight. So, has Kent's um, campaign started, league campaign, or have they so far been sort of challenge matches and that sort of thing? Individuals, have you, have you started the actual uh, league campaign yet? Um, I'm not sure. I think we've done couple of um, cup matches and a 
we did the Easter Challenge and we did a couple of cup matches, but I don't think we've started our league match yet. Of course, I, I just turn up and get on the bike and ride. I don't really know what being it is. At the end of the day, as long as you're focused on the bike, that's what you turn up for. But um, So looking forward to coming back over to the island then. It's good to see uh, Isle of Wight Speedway back and uh, the word on the mainland is a good buzz as well. Um, hope to see you back and uh, we'll let you do what you're doing then, uh, looking at the track. What, what do you make of it? How's it riding for you so far? What, or what's your general views on the track? James, if you'd have seen it earlier this afternoon, it, it was a bit harem scarum, but I mean, I think the guys, I think Barry Martin and the staff have managed to sort of get it into some decent order. How's it riding for you out there in general? It's riding a bit on the slick side, but obviously like the weather you had last night and this morning, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm really surprised the meeting's been on. Um, we came here and they were still working hard and, you know, we had a look, we, we said our bit, they've done it and it's turning into a great racetrack, it really is, you know, it just... It needs time to sort of be reborn again, then it'll be amazing. Well, certainly looking good out there, James. And we'll let you get back to your preparations. And uh, all the best for your season with Kent. And uh, when you come over here, don't score too many points. <laughs> you, but it's a good one. So the future, then give a round of applause, James James. Right for Kent this year. <laughs> Semi-final number one, sponsored by Alan Critcher. And the riders are as follows. Gate one in red on the inside is Ollie Greenwood. Gate two in blue, James Purchase. Gate three in white is Mark Baseby. Gate four in yellow, completing the, completing the lineup, James Cockle, skipper of the Warriors. So the Warriors are actually in uh, action tomorrow night at uh, the Oak Tree Arena in Somerset. And next Thursday here at Smallbrook, we see a four-team tournament comprising of the White Link Warriors, Weymouth Wildcats, Southampton Saints and the Exeter Falcons. And you can keep up to date with everything for the White Link Warriors by going to whitelinkwarriors.co and also speedwayportal.com and check out the Warriors portal. So getting a jump in the first semi-final. The rider in red, Holly Greenwood coming up the inside of the rider in yellow there. James Cockle is Mark Baysby. And all the drift at the back is James Purchase. But good fight going on for second place in a moment. As uh, Cockle goes around the outside of Baysby. And now he's hot on the heels of Greenwood. Cockle with a charge on then in this first semi final, chasing down the leader in red, Ollie Greenwood. James Cockle second and third place in white, Mark Baysby. As it looks like the rider there in blue, James Purchase, uh, pulling to the inside and off the circuit, he goes retiring from the semi final. Ollie Greenwood as he goes down the back straight for the last time into turns three and four. Looks like he's got this one well and truly sign up and goes through to the final with a great win there in the first semi-final. And the second place, great charging ride there from the Warriors skipper in yellow, James Cockle. Also sees him progress to the final and taking an early shower in white is Mark Baseby in third place. Semi-final number one, winning time then for Ollie Green with that was 73.9 seconds. So we have the first two riders progressing to the final, Ollie Greenwood and James Cockle. But before that, we need to get two more. That comes from semi-final number two, kindly sponsored by Hypos. The nose are rider in, in red from the inside, Tyler Govier. In blue from two is Kelsey Dugard. Gate three in white, James Shanes. And gate four in yellow on the outside, Lee Smart. Ryder in white takes a jump, that's James Shanes to the front in this one. Coming through into second place, Lee Smart in yellow as they go down the back straight. Tyler Govia trailing at the back with Dugard in third place. 
And we got a sliding off there in red side of Govia. And he removes himself from the track as Shanks comes around with a commanding lead from Lee Smart and Kelsey Dugard. Slap chains comes in just about there into the final and goes, barring a mistake. So taking the win in Y, James Shane's and a place in the final, second place in yellow, Lee Smart, and another place in the final, and the early shower once again for the rider in blue, Kelsey Dugard. Winning time then for James Shanes in the semi-final, 2.73 seconds on the dot. Right, is making their way out then for this final, sponsored by SBS Epos. In red, from gate one on the inside is Ollie Greenwood, who's been looking very, very fast and immaculate throughout the meeting today. In gate two in blue, it's the skipper for the Warriors, James Cockle. Gate three in white from K Kings is James Shanes, and in gate four in yellow on the outside, completely line up for this final is Lee Smart. Star Marshall puts his arms up away. He wore screen lights wrong for the last time this evening. Making a jump then from gate two in blue is James Cockle. There he goes round turns one and two. Chased down there by James Shanes in second place. Ollie Greenwood challenging on Shanes there and taking a tumble at the back is Lee Smart. So with Smart still down on the deck, just picking his machine up, walking up as the riders come round turn one and two along the back straight. It's still Cockle in blue in the lead there. So the Warriors skipper leading from the front. Let's hope this is a sign of things to come for this season of Speedway for the Warriors. Change now chasing very, very hard right up the exhaust pipe of Cockle. Greenwood tailing off. Can Cockle keep it together? Just one more lap to go. Riding the perfect line round, making it very, very difficult. Shane's putting on a last minute challenge up the inside out of turn four, but Cockle holds on as he wins the final. So great ride there by James Cockle in blue, taking the final then. And a big Yahoo out there as well under that helmet as he came round in front of our camera on turn two. Second place, James Shane's, and third place after making a little bit of a mistake there in the last uh, couple of laps, Ollie Greenwood. some donuts going on over there on the start line and that's one very very happy warrior and winner 73 seconds on the dot then winning time for James Cockle in the final of this the inaugural the Vince Maple Memorial meeting Sorry, he mate. says to the boss, not a bad start, James. That wasn't a bad start. Have you said to you, 
Uh, not bad considering I made a start with running that. Um, yeah, I couldn't have asked for anything better, you know. I haven't done hardly any riding all winter. I've just been working my bum off. Um, trying to provide for my bikes this year. And uh, thankful for Barry for having me at the Isle of Wight. Been one of the tracks I liked, always like coming to. Apart from that, it makes me tired. But um, yeah, I'm glad to be here, and that's, that can't be a better start to my season, that. Well, there you go, it says it all in a nutshell, and he's still out of puff as well. The old adrenaline's going. But a quick word on the hours here. I mean, uh, all the riders get to grip through the track. This afternoon, it was a complete mess. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the boys behind the scenes knocked it into place. How did it ride? How did your meeting go? Uh, we watched you in action. What's your slant on it? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just glad to get back on the bike. I mean, my press and practice was called off last week, so I've not ridden for about three weeks, and this is my first meeting of the season, so I'm just happy to get in and not fall off. If Honest. Yeah, well, it's a good so indication for the rest of the season. We won't keep much longer. Third place night. Give a round of applause, Ollie Greenwood. Then, bring us together. Any second place, obviously, you know, you can see it in your face. You wanted that first place, for, uh, a good start to the season, uh, a good first meeting here at Ida White. And uh, what was your slant on the meeting? Yeah, it was a brilliant meeting tonight. I can't thank the club enough for putting the meeting on. It's great to be back over it. I almost had James, but he got in my way a little bit. But that's racing. It was great to put on a show for the crowd, and you know, hopefully, I'll come max in it somewhere there. It was a good scrap, the two Jameses battling it out. Ladies and gents, give me a round of applause. Show your appreciation. Second place tonight, James James. Come and get your trophy fellow. Come and get your trophy fellow. Give me a round of applause. Well, we're having a photo. We're having a photo. Give us a hug. Give us a hug. This way first, please. Thank you. And this way, James. <laughs> Cheers, lovely, thanks. Nice one, thank, thank you. you James. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Just very briefly, then, James. Uh, now you've got your breath back a little bit. First place, and how's it feeling? Feels very good. Like I said to Dad before that, that final, um, I'll, I've done my job, I've made a final, I'm happy with that. Um, to go out and win it, obviously, it's, it's an amazing feeling, you know. Um, I've been in finals so many times over the years and fluffed it at the end. and. Uh, First meeting of the season, here we go, and um, thanks for everyone that's come out tonight and supported us, and uh, hopefully I've repaid that by winning it from, for being in one of your teams. So, hey, here we go to us. It's not a bad way to start the season, is it? Give a round of applause, ladies and gents. James Cockle then. Give all three a round of applause tonight, first Right. What a good evening, very good entertainment, and the riders did very well. I congratulate them all and I hope they have um, a lot more success over the rest of the season. Um, also, um, if Vince had been here, he would have thoroughly enjoyed himself. But he was up there with a pint in his hand, <laughs> looking down on everybody <laughs> and loving every minute of it. I also want to thank da uh, Barry Bishop and the rest of the committee and all the, um, the rest of the, um, the people or the, the members for having the, the cups in Vince's name. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. What an excellent gesture. Thank you, Heather. Can we get a quick word from uh, our main man, Barry? What do you reckon? First meeting, very, very quickly. Got to be pleased with that, mate. Yeah, it's fantastic. It was great. Loved every minute of it. Um, I'm a fan as well and watched every race. Uh, the, our team were brilliant. The guys, every one of them improved. Um, we prepared the track uh, for a wet day. We had uh, a lot of shale to move, so I'm very pleased that the meeting went off successfully and uh, we had a warrior that won it, which is the most important thing. So well done to James, it's brilliant. Thank you, Barry. Thank you to all the staff, the volunteers. So, and one other thing, there's been a lot of people that has helped us bring that back today. I've said it a lot, I say, I'll still say it again. Thank you, Team Warrior. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for everyone that does this. Thanks to my family that support us. Thanks to Martin's family. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. We're here after the meeting with the meeting sponsors, and this is uh, Jade from Beta Pack. Jade, so w what made you get involved with Speedway down here at Smallbrook? Um, well, Barry approached us just saying he was going to bring it back to the island, and we thought it was quite interesting, and it's good for sort of the island and the community and bringing something back. And I have to say, after tonight, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I'm really glad that he has done it. Excellent. So what is it you actually do with your company? Um, we supply business supplies over the island. Um, so basically like a one-stop shop 
um, for companies and we try to offer a service um, where you can get everything uh, for one place, one delivery, one invoice. Okay, so you deliver door to door? Yeah, yeah, all over the island and we also do the south um, of England sometimes as well, so Southampton, Portsmouth areas. So have you got the bug now and you're going to be here every week? Definitely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Brilliant to see their sponsor enjoying themselves. Thank you very much for sponsoring the Warriors this year. Thank you. Okay, we're here with George Piper. Just sat in the bar after the meeting here. How did you get on, George? How did you find the track out there tonight? Uh, it's kind of difficult tonight. It was uh, very, very different to Saturday. Um, but they, 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 struggled, they struggled with uh, getting the track set up today. So considering the circumstances that all the guys, all the guys are under, uh, I, think, I think they did really well to make the track as safe as they could. But um, yeah, it was a struggle tonight. We struggled with set ups all night. Um, but we were, never, we were never here to win it. It was my first meeting back in about nine years. Um, we just we worked on starts mainly. Got the starts down to a T. Um, starts and first bend, but you know I, I've I've got to get quicker now. But um, I was I was happy with the way I rode tonight. Big guy, I didn't pick up any more po um, any more points because I feel like, I feel I threw threw a couple away. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm pleased. I mean, everything's we were safe. Everything's in shape still. Um, just got just got to build some more speed now. But the track was quite tricky tonight, so. You know, it's it's one of them really. And you had a slide off tonight, so yeah. how are you feeling? Did you need yourself in No, 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 I was absolutely fine. I just I, I, I tried to try a different line to try and gain a bit more speed so I could see James in front of me and I, I just really wanted some points but my arms were getting tired. It's my first full meeting at race pace, so you know, I, I, I wore myself out pretty quick and especially missing the starts early on in the meeting, I used all my energy up at the back um, while I was still getting everything set, figured out. But um, yeah, it was, it was just a slide off really, tired arms and the bike locked up and that was that. And one last question then, yeah. just, just uh, nine years back after nine years out of the sport, what was it like when you take throws on that first race? Oh, man. I mean like all day I've, I haven't been able to eat and I've been real nervous but as, as soon as you pull up to the tapes everything just goes everything just goes clear you know and you're just you're just thinking about the job that you got to do but it was definitely a great landmark for Speedway on the island today the first that, that first time the tapes went up so it's, it's good to see cheers guys thank you uh, hello it's Barry Bishop here from the White Warriors uh, after the Vince Mapley memorial meeting I'd just like to say um, how proud I was today with uh, the whole Warrior team, both off and on the track. They did Vince Mapley really proud. Uh, our winner in James Cockle, fantastic captain. And uh, the rest of the boys did great. Every one of them improved as they get dialed in for the season. Uh, it was a great feeling for Martin and I, obviously, as the, the tapes went up for the first time, quite emotional and felt absolutely fantastic. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. And there's so many of you to mention. Every person, every sponsor, every helper, every rider that brought this uh, Speedway back to ride today. Thank you so much and uh, we'll see you next week for the four-team tournament against uh, Southampton, Weymouth and uh, Exeter.